Boy, what a week it has been. Hi, Thomas Miller. Thank you for stopping by here on Saturday. Probably one of the most important Saturdays that we've taken up. March 18th, Ray Merriman, MMACycles.com newsletter time. And then we're going to have some Thomas time afterwards because I have some thoughts on all of this as well. Obviously, this is the day that we look at financial astrology. Typically, we would be wondering, is the market going to go up next week or is it going to go down? Is my 401k going to be okay? But now we're looking at things from a completely different light. All of a sudden, and out of nowhere, Uranus, we're wondering if our whole financial system is okay. Ray Merriman started doing this in the late 60s, about the same time Robert Glasscock did, and they're about the same age. And he has popularized combining the markets with the sky. If you haven't picked up the Forecast 2023 book that I narrated for him to audiobook, it would be highly worth your while now, especially in all of this, because there are chapters on the Fed. There's chapters on the debt. There's chapters on all of this. The lens through which he looked back last year was pretty incredible now in light of what's already happening this year. That's available on Audible and iTunes. You don't need a subscription on Audible. And it helps support the podcast when you do that. So you're going to get some great information and keep me in this booth and off the streets. So on MMACycles.com, Ray publishes a weekly free newsletter. If you go up to the top, you'll see the free newsletter link. And that's what we're going to be reading. First of all, from the Wall Street Journal, yesterday, this article, Stocks Decline Broadly After First Republic Cuts Dividend. U.S. stocks and bonds fell as investors remained on edge even after big banks attempted a rescue of First Republic Bank. The Dow closed down more than 380 points. Despite Friday's losses, the S&P and Nasdaq gained for the week. And then an article from Thursday entitled, While Yellen Assures Banks Run, this is from the journal's editorial board, says Janet Yellen offered more assurances Thursday that U.S. banks are safe and sound. And we doubt even the Treasury Secretary believes that. Certainly, no one else does. The biggest American banks had to commit $30 billion on Thursday to rescue First Republic Bank. Fifteen years to the day since Bear Stearns' collapse. Happy anniversary. End quote. Raised notes. Banking woes and rescue efforts dominated financial news events last week, consistent with Venus square Pluto in the last degrees of Aries and Capricorn crisis, followed by Venus, then ingressing into Taurus, the rescue and recovery, as Venus rules Taurus, the money sign. And now we have a conflict between our view that this is likely an overreaction per the current geocosmic landscape containing an abundance of Neptune and Pisces signatures, illusion, hysteria, lack of facts, versus the analysis of respected media sources like the Wall Street Journal. The geocosmic situation was intense. In the middle of the week, the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune conjoined in Pisces, a combination consistent with hysteria and wild speculation that the crisis was going to spiral out of control, that this was the beginning of the end of what? Banks? Money? And it didn't help that the bombastic Mars was in the mutable and at times crazed sign of Gemini, also known for communications. Social media and news outlets were dominated by loud and angry Mars voices proclaiming that this was the end of, what was that again? The financial world, banks, and money? The combination of all these issues did indeed cause a mini panic. Depositors had a run on some banks, stocks fell hard, and investors rushed in to buy metals all the factors of a financial panic about to explode. Except it didn't last very long, or it seemed at first, as Venus entered Taurus and the moon passed the middle of Capricorn on Wednesday and Thursday. The firefighters of the banking kingdom swiftly converged to extinguish the contagion before it got completely out of control and stocks surged by the close on Thursday. But on Friday, the fears of a banking crisis arose again as First Republic Bank cut its dividend 
and Silicon Valley Bank filed for bankruptcy. Still, the S&P and Nasdaq finished higher for the week, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average was only down 47 points. It seemed much worse. But then again, that is often the case when Neptune is highlighted. Reality just doesn't seem real. Looking back, the lows of the first part of the week, Monday through Wednesday, or even the prior week, held for many global stock indices. Some took out half of their primary cycle lows of last December, others did not. In the U.S., the S&P and NASDAQ bottomed on March 13th, but both indices were also above their half primary cycle lows of last December. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, however, fell to its weekly low on Wednesday, March 15th, which was also below its half-primary cycle low of December 22nd. This phenomenon, where one market in a region, U.S. in this case, makes a new multi-week low and another does not, is known as an intermarket bullish divergence. The fact that last week's lows happened when a primary cycle low was also due and overlapped with a three-star geocosmic critical reversal date time band of March 9th through the 24th, we'll come back and clarify this before we go on, created a high market timing probability zone for a major reversal in many financial markets and especially world stock indices. That time band remains in effect but the window for overlap indicating a reversal ends next week. Thus, we will know shortly if the market's reaction to the crisis of the past few days is a Pisces-Neptune overreaction or a case of another misjudgment by the central bank that will have serious and lasting repercussions both for investors and for possibly the Fed itself. Okay, before we go on, I know that was a mouthful, so let's pick this apart. What we, what he was saying is that basically we held the lows of December. Before all of this banking stuff started, it looked like the market was going to go up. That's basically what he's saying, is that we were in a primary cycle low, so it should have reversed. We were interlapped with this three-star, and I'm not sure exactly what he's talking about there, but there was this time band of about two weeks there, March 19th through the 24th, where it looked like there could be this reversal in the market. And this was all before the bank news hit anything. I mean, in a world where literally trillions of dollars is exchanged over the course of a day, any day, five days a week, how these bank things can be kept such secret until they pop, I don't know. That was the case 15 years ago, and it sure was the case last week again. Gosh, doesn't seem like 15 years since that last crisis, does it? It's it's such a vivid memory. So what Ray is setting up here is, are we in this overreaction, triggered in the sky by this Pisces energy, invigorated by Saturn last week? Or did the banksters, that's a Ray term from the forecast book, did they really screw up? Like, screw up bad. Because the market did look like it was going up. And I am not going to, you know, you get on, you say, oh, the market is so oversold, it's going to rocket to the, I don't know. We don't know right now. Things are too tender. Let's look at the short-term geocosmics. From the Cato Institute. Now, this was an article back from November 21st last year, quoting, although cryptocurrency exchanges are not banks, some, including FTX, operate like banks, using funds they receive from their clients and promise to return to them on demand to finance risky investments. End quote. In addition to the possible lows and reversals in stock indices, we also note that crude oil fell to a multi-month low on Friday, and precious metals, especially gold, rallied sharply. Crude oil is especially significant because it is ruled by Pisces and its co-rulers of Jupiter and Neptune. Not only was there the conjunction between Sun, Mercury, and Neptune in Pisces last week, but Jupiter will form its third and final semi-square to Saturn, depressed, on Tuesday, March 21st. This will officially and technically, in terms of geocosmic studies, bring to an end the Saturn-Uranus waning square of 2021 and 22. 
There will be no further translations to the departing Saturn-Uranus square from Jupiter or any planet outside of its orbit for a few years. Now I'm going to stick another Thomas comment in here because I think this is important. So Saturn and Uranus, as you remember us talking on the podcast a lot, if you were listening back then, were in this year-long square with each other. As we look back in history, that square has been present in a lot of recessions and even 1930, right after the stock market crash in 1929. It is a marker of what we're going through right now. It also preceded, in a way, many of the events in the New Deal. The New Deal, of course, was FDR's social programs effort and banking restructuring and a whole lot of things in order to help bring the economy back out of the Depression. Could we be there now? The restructuring comes after the aspect. And I'm wondering the same thing about the Pluto return for the United States, which in the Sibley chart is in the second house. Money. That was also last year. Could it be, thinking out loud, that the real impact comes after the aspect? As you're critically thinking these things through, that's something to consider. Back to the newsletter. This will also mark the end of the three-passage series of Mars-Neptune squares. The most recent passage was last week on Wednesday, March 15th, the date of the low so far in most indices. It's interesting to note that the middle or second passage of the Jupiter-Saturn square was the last week of September, when the stock markets also suffered a mini-panic. And the first two passages of the Mars-Neptune square occurred on October 13th and October 19th, which marked the start of the primary cycle low in stocks, October 13th, which was followed by the collapse of the FTX cryptocurrency exchange, which operates like a bank, on November 21st. Interesting that the third and last passage of both of these signatures is unfolding now, as we witness another stock market crash amidst a run by depositors on institutions holding their funds. My comment on that? You just can't make this stuff up, folks. Looking ahead, the other major aspect for the month of March will be the Venus-Uranus conjunction in Taurus on March 30th. This is a strong reversal signature within four trading days, and if the markets are trading near multi-month lows or highs, it can correlate with breakouts instead of reversals. There's some other big stuff coming the end of March and beginning of April that we'll talk about here in a minute. Additionally, we find Pluto making its first entrance into Aquarius on March 23rd, that's Thursday, for the first time since April 1777, followed by Mars entering Cancer on the 25th. These are important ingresses, but by themselves not necessarily market reversals. The planetary aspects cover those, however. Even further ahead on our radar is May 16th through the 23rd, when Jupiter enters Taurus and Mars enters Leo, with both forming a T-square with Pluto, still in zero degrees of Aquarius. Jupiter square Pluto is often a banking crisis aspect, with an orb of about four months, which is in effect now. But Jupiter entering Taurus has a correlation to cycle crests in stock indices by plus or minus one month. Hence, our outlook is for a low forming now, followed by a healthy rally, and followed by another leg down related to a banking crisis. Throughout this period, we still anticipate that the highs and lows of 2022 will hold as 2023 still shapes up as an inside year for most global stock indices. In other words, the price this year will not exceed the range of last year. But with Saturn in Pisces, there will likely be fears, Saturn, that matters will get worse. But fears are not necessarily reality, which reflects the emotional nature of Pisces. Pisces can also bring forth a rescuer, there are heroes among us. And that's Ray's newsletter for this week. Ah, so many places and things to talk about on this. But let's enter two things that he did not mention. April 20th and May 5th, two eclipses. 
Now, neither of these will be over the United States. The first one in April is a total solar eclipse that basically will just be seen in the South Pacific parts of Australia, Western Australia primarily. And then the lunar eclipse, that's a penumbral lunar eclipse on May 5th, and that will mostly cover Africa, Europe, Russia, Australia, but not the United States or South America. From a financial astrology perspective, these eclipses seem to be more powerful for the areas that they cover. But, oh, we'll get our chance. Don't fret, because the October 14th annular solar eclipse does cover the United States and South America. But here's the deal. Particularly on this solar eclipse on April 20th, that is at 29 degrees 50 minutes. That's just almost at zero degrees Taurus. And it is square to Pluto in Aquarius. Did you just get some chills down your spine? I mean, that square is so tight, it's 20 minutes apart. So this is obviously the sun and moon together. That's the collective and the individual squaring Pluto. And when this aspect takes place at 12, 12 a.m. on April 20th, Pluto will be in the second house of money. The other thing that I keep coming back to that our instant gratification-based society quickly forgets is that we are still under the aspect of Saturn and Pluto from January 2020. The aspect that when you trace back to 1518 or 1284, the last thousand years back, has a history of shifting epics. Historically, they've taken up to a hundred years to unfold. Let that sink in. We're in year three. I think one of the areas that you have to look at here is how much trust do you put in, quote-unquote, authorities? And I know for some of you, you put a moderate amount or reasonable amount of trust in authorities to give you proper information in order to live peacefully in society. Others of you, oh no, <laughs> you know, don't trust anything. The government is lying. Corporations are lying. The whole thing is, you know, just a big lie. Truth is probably somewhere in between, but right now with Neptune in Pisces and Neptune also opposite natal Neptune in the United States chart, it's probably, at least astrologically, tilted a little bit more to the latter than the former. In other words, guard up for lies and deceptions, hoping for the pivot. You talk about reversals in the stock market. How about a reversal in society? when lies and deceptions actually become intolerable, unacceptable. I mean, think about it. These politicians, and I'm not isolating one side or the other, broadly, and some are good, some are not good, but broadly, politicians finagle and lie and say they're going to get up and, you know, if you elect me, I'll go do this or that for whatever district they cover, and then they don't. Then they come back two years, four years, six years down the road and want to be reelected. And we do. And when we elect them for not doing what they said they would do last time, we applaud them. We cheer. We put we paint our body with their signs and put them on T-shirts and think that they're these heroes. I don't understand that. When is that going to be unacceptable? When are we going to hold these people accountable? When are we going to say, I hired you to do this job and you did not do that job? In fact, you got in the pockets of the people who were against exactly the thing that you said you were going to do. And you're out. Done. Go back home. Hope you have a good job lined up. That's what we need to be thinking. And that would come from a high consciousness shift of society in general. And why does society not say that to their politicians? Because what, how do they live their lives? Lying, cheating, deceiving, etc. That's the shift. And that's exactly what's going on in the banking system right now. Do you think the government is... I saw Robert Kiyosaki on Twitter, rich dad, poor dad guy. He heard that sound bite from Janet Yellen where she was saying, oh, everything is okay. And the article that was quoted at the very beginning where it said that nobody else believed her and she probably didn't believe herself. And he did an emergency podcast. He said it would be out over the weekend. His comment was she just sold everything down the river. And basically what the comment was is she was saying that the reason they decided to bail out SVB and First Republic was exactly what we heard 15 years ago. Too big to fail. 
She said that they would take these banks on a case-by-case -case consideration of whether they would stand behind the depositors who were uninsured. That's everybody over $250,000. In other words, these banks got special treatment for whatever criteria they decided. But your bank may or may not get that same treatment. So if you have over $250,000 in a bank, you may not get that part back that's over. And the banksters, the Treasury, the Fed, and the politicians would make that decision for you. We'll handle it on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, that should make you feel good. What does the astrology say? Let's look to the sky for some clues. Well, here's my take. First of all, we have to, I think, start with Pluto, because that is death, destruction. <laughs> you know, that's tear it down, build it up. That's transformation. We still don't know, as I mentioned earlier, the implications of the Pluto return for the United States, which in the Sibley chart, and look at Robert, uh, Ray uses a different chart. Robert Glasscock uses the Sibley. Both can justify their positions. But in the Sibley, Pluto is in the money house, second house. So I don't believe that by any means we've seen the full impact of the Pluto return, whatever that ends up being. Death and rebirth of a money system? Well, now we could see how that may not be out of reach. Pluto is sitting at 29 degrees Capricorn right now as I'm recording this on Saturday. Thursday the 23rd, it moves into Aquarius, but it never gets out of zero degrees. Then it turns retrograde and goes back to 27 degrees before finally in 2024 returning again, dancing one more time back into Capricorn. And then finally, by the end of next year, it moves into Aquarius back at zero degrees where it will finally move forward without coming back out. So Pluto the rest of this year and most of next year is going to be very close to zero degrees Aquarius. The first couple of degrees of Aquarius, back to the last couple of degrees of Capricorn, back to the first couple of degrees of Aquarius. You see what I'm saying? Back and forth, back and forth. You want to peek into the Pluto and Aquarius window, just one aspect of it, one element of it? Look at what's happening this past week in France. The president bypassed the people, bypassed a vote, bypassed opinion, and put in a change in the retirement age. Now the people are in the streets. Fire is burning. He was given a no-confidence vote. Authoritarianism versus don't tell me what to do. We're going to see this whole technology thing play out again. We saw it during COVID. We're going to see it again in the banking system with our money. Digital currency controlled by the government, controlled by the Federal Reserve, which is making these individual decisions about how they're going to treat these banks, may give you digital money, but they may retain some control over how that money is used. Some people will embrace that as, oh, this is fantastic. It's so much better than a credit card. And some people are going to say, oh, no, I'm not touching your digital money. Don't you dare tell me what to do. Pluto is all about transformation. It is dancing on the line between what represents old structures, corporations, governments that don't work anymore, the latter degrees of Capricorn, the dying embers, versus the new technologies of the future, the things that really could transform our lives, the things that could take the whole planet to a significantly higher level. The technologies that could clean up the messes of, represented by the latter degrees of Capricorn. The brokenness, the hope, the ray of the future that it could be fixed. And Pluto is dancing across that line, out with the old, in with the new. The public resistance, the authoritarian grip that is loosening, that doesn't want to let go, but the people are saying, give me full control. And you know what? Technology especially blockchain and AI and this kind of thing from a high consciousness vibration could absolutely give us that freedom. You just have to get rid of all the oligarchic control of the authoritarian past. But as you think about this and frame this up in your mind, whatever we have to go through, remember, we're in the latter degrees of Capricorn. It is dying. Aquarius is all about radical new ways of doing things. That's why you and I have to resist the fear of all of this. And we have to stand our ground on that there is 
higher hope in the future. It is progressing in a better direction. The thing is, is we just have to get the entire consciousness on board with that we're not going to tolerate the latter degrees of Capricorn anymore. You guys get out. You're old. You screwed it up. You messed it up. Get out. Sit down. I mean, my God, can we not put a team of legislators together in the United States of America who don't need walkers to get around? Last degrees of Capricorn. Folks, it's over. Breathe some fresh new air. Well, the challenge is going to be how tightly that grip still holds and how reluctant it is to let go. We know it's very reluctant to let go. I mean, look at who the two front runners are for president right now. They're 160 years age combined. Let that sink in. The latter degrees of Capricorn. Wow. It's epic. I don't know what's ahead, guys. I really don't. Uh, go listen to the Kiyosaki podcast. That'll be interesting. He said it would be out in a few days. So I'm guessing, I don't know, today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, something like that. Just He's on Twitter. You can follow him there. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or richdad.com, whatever his website is. And uh, we'll keep it here, obviously, listening to the podcast, because we're going to cover it like a blanket as it unfolds. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you for Level Up Sunday night. Back here again on Monday.